Hello, uh, tis I, me, that dude. People asked a long time ago about how this um, generative song that I uploaded worked. Not a lot of people, like one. Uh, so I thought after so long it would be really irritating if I went along and uh, uploaded a video on how this thing worked uh, to that one person. So here we are. Uh, you're gonna have to excuse the uh, the gorilla-ness of this. My child is upstairs asleep. He's having a bit of a fussy moment. My dog is down here asleep. And I'm just sitting in my fucking living room. Just had some chili. I'm very full. So yeah, here we go. I want to take a quick moment to explain uh, one very, very important part of how this particular uh, song was was put together. Because otherwise I'm just going to have to explain it every fucking time and I honestly can't be bothered. So this arpeggiator here all it's doing is like taking a key and then I'm just repeating it over and over and over again. <clears throat> Pardon me. Then we have these two velocities and a lot of this stuff is actually um, useless. I suppose at this point because live actually has some cool things built into it and this track was made in like live 8 or something like that I think. I can't remember. It was many years ago. So we have a velocity here. And the velocity is making sure that every time arpeggiator lets out a note, it will be output at 65 velocity. We're going to fuck around with things, but for the moment, just keep with me. So it's coming out at 65 velocity. Then we have an, and it's set to fixed. This velocity uh, here this uh, second velocity is set to gate. I'm going to rename them actually. Uh, velocity 1 and uh, velocity uh, B is uh, set to gate there and the range is 65 output and low uh, out low low output is both set to 65. So everything is 65 over this side apart from the lowest. And uh, that's just a, a fucking thing to hear. So if we press a key, that's all we get. So what happens if we uh, take this velocity 1 output and we move it up to 66? Nothing. All right? So everything from 66 and above is going to be gated, okay? That is an important feature uh, of this. Uh, you can't see me pointing because I have no webcam. I've duct taped over it so that uh, I can't be spied on by alphabet agencies. So that's a very important thing to keep in mind. So we'll set it to 65, and everything 65 and under here, 65 and under, uh, will be uh, uh, let out, let out of velocity B. So what happens if we randomize this? So now we have a random uh, on velocity one set all the way up, and it's randomizing the uh, the thing. You know, if we take a look here, we'll make it smaller. You know, that is the range. If we that's set at 65, we can low uh, lower. It? Yeah, sure. Fuck it. Why not? Let's lower it. So from 40, if we set this to uh, 20. The, uh, this line is 40, where it stops being grey is 20, 
and this uh, top gray end line is 60. So we have a range of 40, essentially. So let's set this all the way up again. Set this to 65. You can randomize this. So if we take this down, it will, uh, it's a 50-50 split on whether or not velocity B is going to let MIDI data through. We can increase that amount with range. So the higher the range number, the uh, more likely it is that data will come through up to 100% of the time. If we set this to zero, nothing is going to come out. You set it to one, very, 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 like, you know, on the off chance, something will come out. We set this to 65. It's, you know, a you know, flip of the coin. Um, this random, much like we demonstrated over here, if we set this to 20, now we have a, uh, uh, we're randomizing the velocity coming out of this one. That means if we select both of these, let's group them. Let's take this, let's duplicate that. And because the uh, range here is set to 65, upon this one, we will set the range of this one to 66. Uh, if it will actually do the thing. Oh wait, no, I'm an idiot. We need to set the lowest, my apologies, to 66. And with this we can, I don't know, we'll get this one higher. And uh, yeah, that's basically how that works. Um, yeah, it's that, it's that easy. So that is the defining element of, you know, how this track works, really. So this is the grain, as you can see there, it says right there. It sounds like this. That's what that sounds like. Uh, every MIDI clip is just one single uh, C. And the sample is the on hand break. We selected, oh, I suppose I'll start from over here. Every time this one of these uh, hits, it has a, uh, it's going to select uh, one of 24 keys because it's set by and if we zoom right in oh god oh, we to, oh. there we go this is the size of the loop this tiny little bit here it's a little tiny bit here and it will zippity bippity and um, kind of scratchy like you know like a bug along the length of this entire uh, sample. So let's take a look at the modulation. The loop length, it's going to uh, slide. Yeah, that's how we have this set. So let's um, like have a bit of a, a looky loop. What happens if uh, we do this? I should have shown you that. There are various things that you can do, you know, um, just flip about if you want. 
we can move this down. And let's watch what happens there. So this is looping. It's very difficult to see because of the way it's moving. But the loop start is being modulated twice. I'm not sure why that's there. What was the point? Because I have it over here. Who knows? Uh, I also have these macroed over here for later on at the, at the uh, end of this section. So I'm not sure if this has come uh, like, a, like a course and fine. I'm not positive how uh, setting the same destination for for things there works, but it, it 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 sounds good, and that's what is the main thing. So we'll just do that there. The uh, pitch uh, is kind of an FM deal like that if we turn it off this sounds more interesting and the spread is turned all the way up to make it stereo and, you know you have an LFO and over here there's a bunch of effects and whatever uh, yeah that's basically how that works so this is where we introduce this uh, thing we were talking about right at the beginning with this arpeggio which sounds like this oh beautiful so again this is um, this is, oh, well, this is a bit different, actually. So it is uh, four notes, and every note will has a 100% chance of being uh, anywhere from 1 to 12 steps above. Something interesting to note about random is if, now this is on C, if you want it to also include the note you're pressing uh, you don't so if you want to have C included in you know one of those 12 you actually need to bring it one uh, half step down uh, yeah well in this instance it doesn't fucking matter so uh, yeah that's what that random is doing the velocity uh, is fucking completely randomizing everything and then we have uh, a MIDI effect rack and instead of choosing between two synths we are choosing between two chords so here it's just a, a major chord and here it is a uh, not a major chord because you can have a look here this is plus two and this is plus four I may have chosen plus two uh, instead of plus three uh, because that's how sending it into a uh, fucking what's this called what's this thing called what's this called where is the thing scale uh, works so uh, our base is D for some reason and so yeah we are uh, going to uh, make a random note randomize its velocity and turn it into a chord uh, from here it's going to be a, a major chord we're going to arpeggiate that uh, and then make every note in like that chord lock to the D major scale alternatively it will be a minor chord or something arpeggiate that and lock every note in that chord to the D major scale as you see here you know it's going to be one of uh, one of these things you know 
that could probably actually be 95 uh, possibly uh, then this velocity is going to be randomized and I guess this is the uh, the section that I chose I guess I just thought that sounded nice and the volume is uh, going up and down there's actually not a great deal going on here right going on in here oh nothing no I've got nothing and yeah that's what that looks like and then you know just a bunch of effects really um, yeah and that's it. this one is quite dull uh, we'll, we'll do the dull things first and then we'll get on to uh, the more interesting stuff uh, so this one here is just a, like a blippy bloopy sound Uh, we don't have an arpeggiator uh, instead for some reason uh, this is how I decided to make this one it is uh, 16 notes every note is going to have its velocity blah 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 and we're only letting out like that much this gray section is the amount that we're letting through and then that's uh, you know going like this and then every note that comes through is you know getting uh, its velocity completely randomized up to this amount you know, lots tons and tons and that in turn is going to select one of these uh, velocity chain selecting doohickeys so let's give it a play So right now we're on this lower one, and anytime you see a little dot flash up here, it's been selected by the random velocity, and it's going to uh, play a little section of this, like that much of a selection. It's going to, uh, instead of going whoop, and then play it again whoop, it's going to go boing, 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 boing. Uh, and the modulation is uh, like this you know whatever um uh one thing i should mention before you move the fuck on is that the re-trigger is set to on and it's set to very 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 slow uh so that is more like a uh, instantaneous sample and hold so every time you press a note this is going to be completely random from uh, the top to the bottom, completely random, nice. That's exactly what we want. And then after it, I just threw a bunch of uh, effects like this. That one's got a filter delay on it. What's this one? Uh, a corpus. Oh, that's that one looks different. Uh, yeah. So I haven't really used Live 11 that much. I know there's a bunch of new features in it that make the majority of this quite redundant. I've since moved on to hardware because I'm sick and tired of having to upgrade a computer in order to use software that I have bought and uh, you know then that gets updated now my computer is too fucking slow to use it so I have to buy a brand new computer and then the software will get updated again or a new version comes out and it's a it's a constant cycle anyway so I've moved on to hardware so I haven't used live 11 that much but I am led to believe that much of this is now redundant which is why I decided to upload this video now so I'm not going to really go over the base because it's much of what you've seen already. Um, I guess it's got a bunch of 
stuff going on this all this crap going on you can if you want to see a better look there's a much better look at it in the uh, the other video so we're just going to move right on to the drums uh, there we go oops so this is the amen it's been split up uh, if we have a look here so uh, let me open up this fella uh, oh jabbers uh, we'll that. so uh, let's take a look at slice one and slice three so slice one is just a kick if we go over here we'll see this is a there's nothing in it that's just allowing the actual kick itself to go through this is how i added kind of a subby warbly sound if i solo this and this to my memory sounds a bit different maybe not i'm, I'm unsure so this is just uh allowing uh, some, uh, some, 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 some flabby underside to it, because we all love a bit of flabby undercarriage. And slice three, it's just a snare, you know, it's just a fucking snare. Um, slice two, and what was it, slice, uh, slice, uh, Four. Yeah, slice two and slice four. For some reason they look like this. Uh, what's this one? Oh god, this one is going to be such a uh, pain in the asshole to uh, to explain, actually. Um, and slice eleven. What is slice eleven? Let's look over here. Oh, it's that one. Uh, that's the wrong key. Oh, uh, yeah. So, slice two. Um, is uh, the kick again and you can see everywhere there isn't a kick I have these smaller halftime notes or MIDI information and that is uh, you know it's, it's randomizing the velocity and it's only letting this section out and over here, if I can find it in controls, and yeah, there we go. So it's randomizing the uh, volume. It's taking this volume, and not only is it uh, saying only sometimes make a kick sound, but also make it an accented kick, like a ghost kick. if we select both of these so that's the kick and the ghost accent kick uh, if that is uh, if that uh, velocity is too much for you you can like lower the volume of that one. Which is quite nice actually. Uh, this one is a. Uh, uh, turn off that. It's just a snare, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. And that's just like boom, 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 like that. Let's give it a full listen. This one, slice four. Oh, this one's going to be a real pain in the ass. So, as you can see, it's just one long note. So that note is, if we turn this off, 
and we just have a look. Uh, it's every four, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's every on the one, I guess, is what you call it, every month or whatever. So, and that's going uh, to be randomized. Every piece of MIDI information of the hat is going to be randomized. And then it's going to be routed through one of these. And uh, a pro tip, fucking label shit. So if you have a look over here, this is uh, going to let out uh, this amount of the randomized velocity, uh, a range of 40. Mm. And this is going to be, uh, see now look, one six, one six, one eight, one eight, and it's taking uh, each MIDI note and it's selecting which one of these does it go through. And if we have a look at the at this guy, you know the lowest and the range and so on. Well, basically just just range, I guess then. It's, uh, you know, sometimes going to, uh, you know, make sort of a, uh, a more of a uh, faster uh, hi-hat. So let's just hold down the note. Uh, that's the wrong one. That one. just how, how that works and after that we have a, a velocity to make it like this and there you go there's that and what's this one um, it's like uh, 11 oh this is another snare isn't it yeah so and um, much like how there's never any of these ghost kicks on a kick there shall never be a ghost snare of which this is on a snare um, yeah really that's all that is this is much the similar as this ghost kick but uh, it's a snare instead yeah it's just like that of really how that works. There's also these clicky sounds uh, which is much like the uh, the hi-hat has sort of selecting uh, an arpeggiator. Now it's not arpeggiating it's just repeating the note. Um, I find uh, that's just a, a nice way of doing things. If we loop this guy here And it's that piece that is uh, playing. And it does basically just that, the end. That's all that is. So, if you thought the hi-hat was a bit of a pain in the ass, this bit is a major pain in the fucking ass. I'm not going to go over all of these other things because you know how they work now. You know what all the stuff is doing. This bit is it uh, taken to a comical extreme and it makes something uh, that sounds a little bit like this. Alright, so let's uh, zoom in. Here, and we'll take a look at the MIDI clip. So, 
and there's that. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, it. Now, this is the Amen. So, pardon me, you know what the Amen sounds like and what hits are where in them. So, we uh, first things first have an arpeggiator. If there's only one note being held down, it will just uh, play that one note to whatever rate it is. If you have a bunch of notes held down, it's going to arpeggiate it uh, at that rate in whatever style you have. So I have it set to random. So if I can I do this, I don't know, probably not. Probably not. Let's try. Can I make this small? Oh, oh! I just am ever so slightly unable to make it uh, any smaller. What if I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? Oh, oh, oh! Will it allow me? No. Can I do it like this way? Nope. That's the sm This is the smallest amount you're able to loop. For some reason, they've decided that you will never, ever be uh, have any reason to loop. Uh, anything smaller than that amount. Um, oh, well, there you go. Thanks for making that decision for me. So, uh, it's going to kick random note, random uh, hit, I suppose, random section of the break, snare, random section, random section, kick snare and so on much uh, in this fashion and uh, then it starts to get really really complicated I mean uh, just kind of comically complicated in just uh, I don't know why uh, uh, you see I actually stopped labeling stuff because I had been working on this for so fucking long I just got tired and fed up uh, I do I do like this drum bus thing guy this drum bus guy this is a really cool plug-in I tend to not really use a great deal of external VSTs and VSTIs um, just like a couple of ones that I really like but I find for the most part live does things just fine so anyway so the velocity is uh, being randomized and it's going to select one of these two uh, chains. We'll call them channels. So it's going to select one of these two channels. More often than not, it's going to choose the straight channel. And from here, that's going to get randomized again. If it, uh, if it does go into the straight channel, it's going to become randomized again and then it's going to choose whoy, one of these two channels so it'll go into regular or glitch if it goes into regular it's going to come in and get randomized again again and then <laughs> it's going to choose one of these two or four rather um, and what is going on with uh, with this uh, sample? Uh, that I suppose basically nothing. It's just being completely normal. What's happening here? All right. Yes. Now I recall. So this is uh, the correct pitch, and this uh, will raise the pitch. See, we have the root note changed. We brought the root note down. And what's happening here? Oh, it's uh, still down a bit. Oh, now it's higher. Now it's a higher root note. So um, that's going to lower the pitch. It's going to make the pitch lower. And that will make the pitch uh, higher, I believe. Uh, or the inverse. Sure experiment. Listen, much like my music, no one's going to listen. Just make it for you. It's a lot more fun. So if it doesn't choose the reg or reg uh, uh, channel, it'll choose the glitch channel. 
and what's going on in this one. Oh, and hell, what is going on in this one. It will only sometimes choose this channel, and it will uh, randomize the velocity, and then it will go into one of these channels. And this channel is just, uh, what I did is I made this, and then I duplicated it, and uh, then I went in and uh, I changed all of these things. You see there, I made it so that the, uh, the loop length and the filter frequency and the pitch is going to be all wonky, all winky wonky. And there's something going on in the MIDI over here. Um, the velocity will change the LFO2 rate. Isn't that fascinating? It's going to make uh, the uh, the rate be a bit different. This bit here will make it go up and down, uh, or down, I guess. Um, and it'll you know do some filter stuff. Um, so if we go into the double, this is going to uh, instead of going boom, it's going to go boom boom. And this is much, much the similar. Much like this sort of a deal. But, uh, you know, I, there's no glitchy happenings in this. Um, maybe I just uh, couldn't be bothered. Maybe I gave up at this point. And that's uh, basically how this entire thing is put together. Also the, um, the tempo. <laughs> is a uh, risen get rid of that it's uh, starting to annoy me now I don't know how much of this is going to be edited but uh, <coughs> if at all but you know hopefully you get something out of this um, you know and then it goes on and uh, you know, the section one, I built this in sections, section one and section two, um, because of my favorite electronic musician is a fellow called Prism. Uh, and his stuff is just, it's just fucking amazing. He released only a couple of albums and then went off to uh, be an accountant for some non-profit or something. I'm not positive. But he, uh, it's it's a crying shame that that non-profit has uh, a new accountant instead of me having yearly or bi-yearly or uh, even every four years new Prism albums, which is much more important to me. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, there you go. Prism, check him out. He's fucking amazing. And that's kind of how his stuff gets uh, gets put together, you know. The first half of a song will sound like such and such a way, and the second half will sound such and such a way. And both of them sound cohesive, although uh, it will like, be different, you know. Uh, fantastic, fantastic musician. He's here on YouTube. I will uh, provide a link in the description, wherever the fuck it is. Uh, now, I'm not positive where the description lies, but that's where it's going to be. So have a lovely day. Um, be a good person. Um, yeah. Uh, goodbye.